Not long ago, I reviewed the JM Go N1 Ultra. Fantastic 4K projector, but if you want something that's a little more affordable, then they do have this model too, which is the N1 Pro. The M1 Pro has the same gimbal setup, it looks almost identical, and because of this gimbal here, which I love by the way, you can point it up at a ceiling, you can easily spin it around, and you don't have to keep going through the settings and readjusting the focus and the keystone because it does all of that automatically. It's got auto keystone correction, auto focus, and it does have a brightness that tops out at 1500 CVIA lumens. And it's running Android TV 11. It has built-in speakers, which are Dyna Audio tuned. They're 10 watts each, and they've got impressive bass for the size of this. So in this video, I'll go over the image quality, what you get in the box, and exactly what you can expect out of the JM Go N1 Pro. Inside the box, you will find our quick start guide. We have our remote. Now it takes two AAA batteries, which are not included. And this is a standard Android TV remote, the layout of it here. You've got your settings, menu, home, back, directional pad, okay in the middle. This is for Google Assistant, power on, volume up and down there too. There's no dedicated buttons as you can see for Amazon Prime Video or Netflix, which some others do include. The power supply, this is 150 watts. And then we get our power cable. This is the US one that I have, and that'll be dependent on the region. Just like the N1 Ultra I reviewed, the N1 Pro has the same gimbal design, the same looks to it, and I think this gimbal is fantastic. So you can swivel this around 360 degrees. You can then angle this up or down. So it is perfect, I think, for projectors to have this ability. And yes, you can point it right up at the ceiling if you wanted to do so, that is possible and just spin that around. So super flexible. I wish all projectors would adopt this gimbal design because it's just so practical. Power button with a status LED is located right here on the base. The M1 Pro has built-in speakers. They're 10 watts each and they're from Dyna Audio. They are tuned by them and they sound really good for the size of built-in speakers and I'll give you a sample of them later on in the video along with the fan noise. Because of course it is actively cooled. There are two fans, you can just see them through this grill. It's hard for me to capture it on camera. So that is what's keeping it cool. Very good cooling in it. And I'll let you know how it sounds later on with a sample two of that. So you'll see here at the bottom, we have two HDMI ports. Now the HDMI 2.1, but of course this is a full HD projector. So you can put that 4K signal into it, but that will then be sampled down to just full HD. We've got a USB 2 port here, 3.5 millimeter out. And yes, one of these HDMI ports is supporting ARC. Now this base is very sturdy. It's not going anywhere when I give this a bit of a, a push. It's my table that's moving about and not the base of it. It's very solid. And yes, with a special bracket, it can be ceiling mounted too. Now you see the base of it. This is all rubber, so that is what it's sitting on. And that freely spins around, no problems. It has very little resistance, but just enough. So it's not going to just suddenly just start to turn on its own if the table didn't happen to be 100% perfectly flat. So this is a DLP projector. Now it is using their own in-house tech, which is a MALC triple laser optics that it does have this model. Now what MLAC stands for is Microstructure Adaptive Laser Control. It's a laser engine that they're using for it. Now it does have HDR10 support. There is no optical zoom within this. It is digital zoom. And it's of course using a 1080p ratio. So not 4K like the ultra model if you want that and the better brightness, that's the one to go for. So the brightness of this model here, this is 1500 CVIA lumens. The throw ratio is 1.2 to one. So it's a very smart projector. It's got a few sensors here, time of flight camera two and an ambient light sensor. So it has the smart features, auto screen fitting, smart object, avoidance for the screen to resize that if you maybe got a plant in the way or something and smart eye protection. This one I do like having young children. So if someone walks in front of it, looks into the laser, well, it's gonna dim down that image because of the smart eye projection just to reduce the possible damage that they could do. So it's a good feature to have, especially for those with young children like myself. And the lamp life, the longevity you can expect out of the N1 Pro, well, it's 30,000 hours, which is a lot. 
So it has a quad core MediaTek chipset. It has two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, the ROM, and it is running Android TV 11. Now that spec is enough. Android TV 11, it only needs about two gigabytes of RAM. So it's ample for running that particular OS. Where's the power plug? Well, it's a little hidden away. There's even a card inside the box that tells you its location. It's right here. So kind of hidden away. How I have the M1 Pro set up here is 200 centimeters away from my white painted wall. And this does give me an estimated about 100 just over inches the projection you are seeing now on the wall. And let me just demonstrate that auto keystone correction and auto focus. I think it's fantastic. Look at how fast this is. So as I move it, it straight away corrects that horizontally and vertically, moving it all over the place. See how that image is, is just corrected straight away wherever I point it. So that's great, you can just move it to a new position, fire it up, and it will be good. Spot on, as I move it about here, it is just so quick at doing this. I really cannot fault the auto keystone correction and auto focus with the M1 Pro. So here we are in Android TV version 11. Now, straight out of the box, it has pre-installed applications that you probably want to use, like YouTube, you've got Amazon Prime Video. I've installed a few extras like Disney Plus, and you do see that I've got Netflix here. Now, Netflix does not by default show up in the Google Play Store because it just is not a supported device. Now, there's a workaround for this, and that is to get and install this, which is called Aptoid TV. I recommend that. And when you go into it, I'll just demonstrate to you what you need to do is if you go into Discover, that's just the first menu there, you see that Netflix is showing up twice here. So this application does not work, not that one, but this is the second Netflix app. If you go along and then install this, it will work. There is a catch, however, this version, the APK file uh, does need a mouse. So you can't navigate with our included controller. You need to plug in a mouse, which I've done. Android TV supports that. Now the menu, it's very quick. Everything loads in. I don't see any problems with caching. You can see all of the thumbnails are there. And I'll click on an episode just very quickly here to test the performance. You'll see that it loads in quick. So this is Vikings Valhalla. And wow, that was quick. So that just took a couple of seconds. I'm on Wi-Fi AC right now, so that's working just fine. And there we do have now Netflix with the N1 Pro. But I'll get out of this now and go back into the main menu. Projector settings, we have a lot in here. So instant gimbal light display correction. I recommend you just keep this on so it's uninterrupted. When you move it around, it corrects horizontally, vertically, straight away with auto keystone correction. Auto keystone correction, you have some options for that and I've just adjusted it now. It's tweaked it a little bit, you saw then, and our manual keystone correction. So we do have four points here that you're able to tweak and adjust that and just get it absolutely right. Uh, keystone correction setting is where you can decide to not have it do it on startup. Maybe you've got the projector in a fixed position in a mount or a seating mount or something and you just don't need that, just like autofocus. So I can tell it to now autofocus and you see that there's no splash screen, it just does it straight away, it is very quick. Manual focus, if I need to go and tweak that and decide that, hey, you know what, I think it's out just a little, I'm gonna tweak it a bit, you've got that option. The same as our Keystone focus, you can disable that autofocus and pitch it, zoom, and movement here. So going into this, you can zoom it a bit, but remember this is digital zoom, so if I start to zoom in or out, um, it's going to look a little bit sharper, but I recommend you try to bring the projector closer because that will improve the image quality rather than using digital zoom. Now, this is a really good setting, handy, and I wish more brands would do this. We have picture memory, so you can save three profiles. This is excellent because most brands don't offer this, and it's very handy to have if maybe you move the projector around from three different positions. Picture restoration, so I'm gonna tap this now because I want that keystone how it was before, and you can see it's just gone back again. Projection method, so this is the menu you want to go into if you're going to be sealing mounting this. If you do that, then you need to go in here and adjust this over. So you can invert that image, ceiling installation, and front projection or rear projection. Brightness, well, I'm running this at number 10, and that, of course, is the 1500 CVIA lumens, adaptive brightness, handy setting to have if you need this, low blue light mode, so this is great for at night. 
uh, to not keep yourself awake. So they recommend you do enable this if you're watching, say, movies or something very late at night and the smart eye projection. So I can demonstrate that now. If I walk in front of the projector, I'll just put my hand here, it dims out. See that? It says that the eye projection has been enabled. And if you've got young children, that's a great setting to have and keep that on. And we can even turn off the indicator light. If you find that annoying, well, you have that option to just simply disable it. And then we have device preferences. This is really our Android settings, but there are some important ones in here and that is picture. So picture is probably one of the ones you might go into. You can adjust here the contrast, saturation, hue, sharpness, gamma, color temperature, HDR, turn that off if you didn't want it, advanced video, color tuner, and 11 point white balance correction, and simply just reset that to default. The other that may be interesting is this sound. So we have some settings here. This is basically an equalizer. So we have standard, music, movie, and sports. So sports I found is boosting up the vocals. Movie tends to just give them a little bit more bass and music is bass and treble, but I keep it on standard, which is flat anyway, but I am really impressed with the built-in speakers, the Dyna Audio speakers you hear later on from the sample, really good bass, especially at low volumes. So screensaver is there, Chromecast, that's built in and Google Assistant that I talked about before, well, you've got options for that and the rest of the settings there are your standard Android TV settings you get. Now to quickly have a look at Amazon Prime Video, which is another popular application. And remember, you've got Disney Plus. You have a lot in there. Most of your streaming, in fact, everything's gonna be in here being Android and YouTube is there too as well. But Amazon Prime Video, I will go into an episode of Mr. Robot. And that is loading in. It seems to be a little bit slower here than Netflix for some reason. I do believe it's because I'm jumping straight into an episode. Yes, which I am. And of course, this is in full HD. It does have a Widevine level one cert. So everything should be in full HD that we're viewing. And it has that cert, which is great. Some of the other more cheaper projectors that I am reviewing, they don't have a Widevine level one cert. So you have that issue of everything just being in standard definition but not with this particular model, which is great. And then image quality, I wanna talk a bit about that. Now projectors are extremely difficult to capture and try and represent them as exactly how they look in person. And I can't seem to do that with this projector here. I do struggle with some models, this is one of them. Now the blacks look very deep. There's no speckle, there's no grain. If you see like a blue tint to the image, it's not like that in person. So I find the colors to be excellent. That brightness is very good. The 1500 CVIA lumens and the contrast 1600 to one. And again, with these images, I'm not representing this as good as I would like. And trust me, I have recorded these clips now three times over, trying to capture it, how it looks. But on camera, you may see a little bit of banding, you may see some tint, but when you do see this image in person, it is very good. I'm really happy with the quality of this Full HD N1 Pro. And now over to some gaming with our N1 Pro that yes, you can use it for casual gaming. I've got my PlayStation 5 hooked up to it now. Now it did automatically detect it as an HDR10 display and 4K. So because it accepts that HDMI 2.1 input, it's gonna be scaled and sampled down then to full HD. It still looks very good here. And it is playable. So when I turn left and then right, it's coming through, so I don't have any issues with gaming like this. I'm not noticing any problems with the latency input lag. No, it all seems to be great for some console gaming like this. And finally for gaming, this is Uncharted, and I'm in a room that has quite a tricky puzzle, but it's a great area to show off the HDR because the blacks are looking Reasonably deep, good. The dynamic range for a projector, I am happy with. I think this is great. And the brighter areas, especially where we have those flames right now as I walk towards this projector, it does stand out. Now, me capturing this is, at the moment, I'm not recording in HDR, but it still looks good. It should still come through good on camera of just how amazing this does look. Not only the graphics too, but the way that this projector is displaying this image, I think is perfect for console gaming. If that is also your idea to game 
on the side a little with this projector, not just Netflix, not just YouTube, not just Amazon Prime Video, but a bit of gaming. So all up, if you want a projector that's full HD, that doesn't have any speckle, any noise to it with the blacks, good contrast, uniform brightness, good focus to great optics, and very quick autofocus and auto keystone correction, then this model does come recommended from me. It runs Android TV if that's what you want. You've got all that huge array of applications, of course. So you've got Disney Plus, Amazon Prime Video that I showed in this video. And unfortunately, the real only con of this model here is Netflix is not pre-installed out of the box. And if you go into, as I mentioned, Google Play Store and search for Netflix, it won't show up because it's not a supported device. But I did find a workaround for it, and that is to use Aptoid and then install Netflix via that. It's the second version you want that they do have. They've got two of them there. That worked for me. And now I've got Netflix with this projector. So impressive speakers too. Like other models that do have say six watt speakers, these are 10 and Dyna Audio has done an excellent job with just how well the bass sounds, even at lower volumes, it's very good. It's impressive for the size. And most of these projectors now that I've been covering in the last year, two years, they are normally very good with their speakers. But this one I would say is a edge above the others when it comes to the bass at the lower volumes. Gimbal design, this is the key reason to go for it. I think it's just absolutely awesome that you're able to quickly just spin this around and on the fly like that, it auto corrects the keystone. So you've got the image all corrected there and it focuses and you don't have to go into the settings each time and mess about with it. And the focus, autofocus seems to be very good. For me, I haven't had any problems with it. So you could decide that later on you move it to another room, uh, you angle it up at the ceiling, maybe you're gonna be watching a movie lying down in bed so you can just shoot it up onto the roof. If that's what you want to do with your projectors, then it's got that flexibility to it. Now it has the eye care mode protection that if you accidentally walk in front of it or a young child does, it'll dim that image down very dim and stop the projection, which is great for safety. And it can auto size the projection too with its built-in sensors that it's got. So it'll size it down. So it's got a lot of features. Android TV 11 seems to work really well and the image quality and the brightness all checks out. So. It is another great model here from JMGO, the N1 Pro. Thanks a lot for watching this video.